Okay, good afternoon. I hope you had a relaxing long weekend. Good luck work day. I'm going to show you what was added to the class website, the details and assignments under week three. Then, since we didn't have time for the last series of scenes from Herbie the Love Bug on Friday, I'm going to do that right away so we have enough time to show, as I promised, the central segment of the film. After that, I would like to entertain a discussion with you about the film and possibly about Friday's class, especially the part about the future of the automobile, if you have any opinions to share. So this is a new page with three, similar to week one and week two. You find some presentations about the readings that were assigned and due this week. And in this case, the readings come from a little book called Araminta and the Automobile that republished three short stories that Charles Loomis had published several years earlier in 1900, 1901, and 1903. So these belong to the first period. It's rare to find substantial narratives centered on the automobile before the year 1900. I also have another presentation. It is not very long. There are some focus points about the short stories that I will use to illustrate them. And more importantly, there are a series of pictures and links that show you the kind of car that is described in the stories, especially for story number two and story number three, which are both peculiar in terms of the references of technology. For example, it may, seems, may seem completely weird for the middle story. It may seem far-fetched that someone would try to uh, make up a car to look like a horse and carriage, but in fact, there is a patent to that effect from that period, and everything is described, illustrated, and linked inside this presentation. I've added a section called The Automobile in Every Children's Book, although I will be talking about one and possibly mentioning another, neither will be required readings. However, this is also a very early example. L'Automobile de Mar is, is a French illustrated book for children that was initially published in 1897 and then republished in 1902. And you can either look at it from Gallica, which is the digital archive of La Bibliothèque Nationale de France, or you can download it, and uh, I have prepared a PDF myself. Of course, it's on Google Drive, so the Stony Brook login will be required. It's not very long. Uh, it's mostly illustrations with captions that can be a couple of lines or a whole paragraph telling a very simple story. The illustrations are sufficient to follow the story. And it's interesting because of the date of publication and also because it reflects the culture of the time. It represents an interesting combination or juxtaposition between colonialism, the story for the most part takes place in Africa, and the automotive technology as two things that are in different ways exotic. So 
the representation of Africa is exotic. Of course, it includes tropes and stereotypes that are typical of a colonialist culture and, and can be considered offensive today. And the automobile is at home in that context at something that is similarly exotic or quasi-magic, magical. On Thursday, we will continue to add to the list of films, watching a few scenes from Bumblebee, which is a nice segue from Herbie the Love Bug, because in this film from the Transformer series, which is pretty much the only one that anyone can appreciate, even if you are not into Transformers, but in this particular case, the Transformer turns into a yellow Volkswagen Beetle and then establishes a relationship with the protagonist who is a young high schooler. I've added a series of links. Again, they're not required reading, just for you to explore, uh, to know more about the movie. The assignments for this week are just readings, review, the new presentation that was posted under week three, and this is next week's topic. Jules Verne is, can be considered the father of science fiction, of a new kind of adventurous fiction centered, focused on new technologies, and uh, will focus on two of his books. You'll be reading mostly from one of them that he wrote and published at the end of his life, where you find uh, a, a very powerful vehicle, who, which is not just an automobile, but also something that can fly, that can float on the water, that can go under the water by a, a submersible uh, vessel. I haven't corrected, reviewed yet your assignments, the one that was due last week, and there is another one, the second one that is due next week. I also have, I know that I have a few unanswered messages in my inbox. I'll tend to everything as soon as possible. Now for the conclusion of our examination of the love bag. We know that this movie is structured following the three act uh, pattern of many romantic love stories. And in, in, in this kind of, of narrative, you have boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girl. In this case, you have both the girl and the car that established a friendly or quasi-romantic relationship with the protagonist. And in some ways, this can be considered similar to other movies in a subgenre of the romantic genre of the rom-com where someone falls in love with a woman, but there is also a pet, usually a dog, that facilitates the establishing of this relationship and again, losing the pet, finding the pet, losing the girl, finding the girl, uh, are uh, somewhat aligned even in those movies. In the case of the film The Love Bug, uh, uh, Herbie the Love Bug from 1968, what they added in a very Californian way was this theme of East and West, of East Asia representing spirituality, and the West coming to the realization that even material objects such as the car can have a spiritual life of sorts. The acknowledgement that the new capitalist society, the new consumerist society takes you in a life where you're constantly interacting with appliances and other objects, and therefore your living being is somewhat transferred 
or applied to some of these material products as well because they are, are, are part of the making of your life, okay? So in the scenes we are going to watch now, you will see how Jim Douglas, who still think of himself as someone who can restore his career as a successful pilot, race driver rather, uh, after his previous failures, starts racing Herbie, has some victories at California racetracks that still exist. And of course, he's convinced that he deserves all the merit for these victories. Of course, Mr. Thorndike, the rich British man who sold him the Volkswagen Beetle, becomes jealous, suspicious. He thinks there is some kind of trick. He cannot understand how his brand new Apollo uh, can be beaten by such a tiny car with such a tiny engine. Little by little, the people around the car come to the realization, first fantasy, then also uh, the, the woman come to the realization that there is something more to Herbie that Herbie has, uh, is alive, has a personality, and uh, uh, is at least partially responsible for these uh, victories. Jim Douglas will be, of course, the last one to come to that realization and after he buys a Lamborghini with the money from his victories to replace Herbie with this red, uh, uh, more advanced Lamborghini, Herbie destroys the car and don't shed any tears because they didn't actually destroy a Lamborghini. You can see that later on they show you a wrecked Jaguar which was less rare and less expensive than the Lamborghini, more common also in California as a sports car. And when it's almost too late, Jim Douglas will go and look for Herbie, which has disappeared, running through the streets, the foggy, the dark and foggy streets of San Francisco, mostly redone in a studio, right? In a studio set. And, and then it'll be Herbie itself that, well, Jim Douglas will save Herbie and Herbie will save Jim Douglas and the conclusion of the film I can summarize after uh, we watch these scenes. So let me find the exact point. point on, Jim and the car will reconnect, Jim will also reconnect with Carol, they will go to this El Dorado endurance race that will last several days and in spite of all the attempts, the repeated attempts by Miss Thorndike and his accomplices to sabotage the little car, they'll manage to get first and second at the end, because right at the end the car will break in two. So the front uh, part of the car with Jim and Carol will pass the finish line first and Tennessee, the mechanic, with the rest of the car in tow, but separate at that point, will finish second. The very last scene will be the marriage, of course, between Jim and Carol, and after the ceremony, they get on the car, both on the back seat, and someone asks them, where are you going for your honeymoon? And they say, we don't know, Herbie will take us there. Okay, and, and the last frame is the two of them, the two lovers looking towards the spectators from the back, shield, the back uh, window of the car, okay?